What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Pick and Fruits channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to preserve sport prints for long-term storage. Today, you are who you are today. See? It still means that you're a newer version. Some of the things that I have prepared for us today are a bunch of sport prints of different varieties that I have here in these aluminum foil prints. I also have a generic aluminum foil that is still brand new, sealed in the box. We are going to be using plastic Ziploc baggies to put our sport prints into whenever we are done with them. And I also have some labels here to distinguish our different genetics. So the first print I'm going to be showing you is going to be this KOH. And don't mind the wrinkling of the aluminum. All of these prints are really old. They're actually from 2017, 2018, and 2019. But as you can see, these prints are still very, very dark and very pronounced. Very beautiful looking and actually quite big, big specimens over what you would see usually on spore prints. Spore prints tend to be a little bit smaller, but these prunes happen to produce some really big caps and really big mushrooms. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting out the individual spore print from this aluminum foil, and I'm going to be cutting myself a piece of aluminum foil, new aluminum foil, and if you don't know, aluminum foil comes sterile in the pack. So as soon as you open it, fresh out of the box, it is still food grade and very clean to use. So I will be taking each individual print, cutting the square uh, where the spore print is laying, and then I will transfer it to a little envelope of aluminum foil that I will be creating. Uh, so the first step here is I'm going to be taking my scissors and spraying them with isopropyl so that they're clean. We're trying to avoid any contaminants from landing on the print, and that's why we're doing our work in front of the blowhead. Uh, but if you don't hear the flowhead running, that is because we are using uh, some high-grade microphones that cancel out some of that sound. So there's our first print. We'll set it up here in front of the flow hood. And when you first take the spore prints on the aluminum foil, you will notice that the spores tend to stick to the aluminum because they are extremely hydrated from being freshly dropped from the mushroom cap itself. So it'll be quite difficult to get these spores to go anywhere, whether they be in front of the flow hood or be an outdoor environment where there's wind blowing and stuff like that. Next step is going to be taking our aluminum foil package. I'm going to spray it down just to make sure we are extra clean. And my hands have already been pre-cleaned before this. We'll cut it open. And as you can see here, this aluminum is nice and clean and crisp. No wrinkles on it whatsoever. And very carefully, I'm going to be taking a cutting that is slightly larger than the print surface we are working with. And to make sure that we don't get any weird cuts on our aluminum foil, I'll be using a straight edge. Cut across. We'll put this thing to the side. Then I will cut this down the middle. We'll be placing the spore print on the opaque side face up, and we will gently fold over. Create a straight crease. Turning it over, create another straight crease. Creating this tight little square that will prevent anything from getting inside of our spore print and allowing contamination to happen. So there you go. That is a first spore print, nicely encased in aluminum, looking very crisp, looking very clean, and that'll prevent anything from getting inside and, and contaminating our print.
I'll do it again with the second print. This one is a little bit smaller. So we will have a smaller square to work with. And I will try to remember where the aluminum foil square is so that we don't actually fold the prints during this folding process. Once our prints are nicely encased in the aluminum foil, I will take a bag, slip them in, seal them, and place a genetic label on them so that we don't get them confused with anything else. So now that we've properly packaged our sport prints in these little stick log bags and put the appropriate genetics label on them, I've also put a nice little decal for our Picking Fruits genetics line, and we can put these to the side and put away for proper storage. All right, and up next we have the next three sets of prints, and these happen to be stargazers. And if you can see here, this print turned out to be a little bit wavy and not so pronounced. And the reason that I think that happened was because this print was the second printing of this particular mushroom cap. So as I said before, this mushroom print actually came from the second printing of a mushroom cap. And the reason that we want to do that is because mushrooms aren't typically grown in sterile conditions. Uh, we need to introduce mushrooms to fresh air and give them fresh air exchange to actually promote the primordial growth that will eventually turn into the mushrooms. And so that typically happens in a setting that is not 100% clean. We could potentially have some bacterial spores or mold spores attach themselves to the gills because the gills happen to be very moist. Okay, so this is the second print of our stargazer and I believe this to be the first print from that mushroom cap. You can still see the waviness of the cap, uh, but you can see the more pronounced spore formations from the gill droppings. And very quickly I will show you spore print number three from that same printing process. And as you can see this one is extremely light almost non-existent, but it still has variable spore production that can still be used for germination. And I expect this to be the cleanest print of them all, just because the third dropping was probably the less contaminated dropping of the spores from the whole process. And if you want to study these spores under a microscope, it is very easy to scrape off a little bit of a sample and place it onto a glass slide. And if you want to, you could also use immersion oils to help produce a better image. And the magnification that you would want to use is probably around 400 to 800 times. And that will allow you to see the sporulations clearly. And if you zoom in past that, you can probably see individual spores. Up next, we have the Peza, Peza Amazonian, P-E-S. Amazonian and I and if I remember correctly these prints are going to be very dark very pretty and this type of sport print would be the classic sport print that you would actually see on t-shirts art or stickers this is the epitome of what a sport print should look like you can see the the diameter of the cap where the spores have dropped and you can see the stem in the middle that has not been printed over and that is because the stem does not produce spores so when you take the spore print, you actually cut the cap right at the base of the stem, where the stem meets the mushroom cap. And that's what causes the circle in the middle to form without any spores. And if you guys would be interested in seeing how we actually make these spore prints, go ahead and drop me a comment down below and let me know that you want to see a video of me making these spore prints. What about making spore print meat? That'd be cool. Here is another Amazonian. Very pretty. Another use for these spore prints could possibly be for making spore syringes. And the way that you would do that would be by taking samples of these spore prints, scraping them off of the aluminum, and putting them into a water solution that has been pre-sterilized 
so that your spores can become dispersed into water. And then you can take the spore solution from your syringe and put it into petri dishes to see how they grow and how they create colonies. And there is no particular reason why we place the print face up on the opaque side of the aluminum foil other than the way that I like that the reflective side actually really stands out with the spore print on it when placed on the opaque side of the aluminum foil. All right, family, so thank you for watching along with us. That concludes our project today. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you don't follow us on Instagram, make sure to go ahead and do that and shop with us at pickingfruits.com and find us and like us on Facebook. Thank you. So the first print I'm going to be showing you is going to be this KOH print. And uh, don't mind the wrinkling on the aluminum. All of these prints are really old. They're from 1970. <laughs> 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 and if I'm and if I'm correct, we are going to see the first printing on these other sheet seats. <laughs> on these other ones.